Whoops. Morning. Morning, everybody. All right, so today we are going to make some Damascus. I've got a stack of 26 pieces. Half of them are 10A4, the other half are 15N20. Hey, Joe. So we're going to do this start to finish. Uh, we're going to grind these down, get them all cleaned up, tack weld them together, draw them out in the forge. The forge is heating up. We've got the gas turned down quite a bit for the stage it's at, so it's going to take a while to heat up fully. So, okay, I'm going to put you guys over here. This isn't a fresh, fresh belt, so it's going to take longer, so I'm going to change it out. We're just going to go with the brand new 36 because I am out of 80.
Hey Joe, everything's going good here. How are you doing? So, these are obviously hot. I never dunk them in water. We don't want to get any kind of surface rust on these at all. So, we're going to go straight over and clean them in acetone. Eighty degrees. Yeah, um, it's snowing here right now. I don't even know what a is that coot. I don't even know what that is. So uh, the advantage is over a two by, or the advantage is with a two by seventy two grinder. Uh, you have a seventy two inch long belt two inch wide um, makes it doing bevels really easy really easy to control there's tons of attachments for these that uh, simplify everything and make it easier to uh, tune in your blade and your handle and all that exactly the way you want it. all right my stuff ready acetone gloves ooh I bet Michigan's pretty white right now it's got to be cold That's my acetone bucket. I'm going to do that again after I prove that that wasn't the problem. surface rust that's already started because it does start very quickly and if I got any kind of oils so I'm going to start with a piece of 10A4 So I make these different thicknesses. Why well, I don't make them? I purchase them in different thicknesses on purpose. The uh, 1084 is thicker than the 15N20. I 
Otherwise, how are you going to know how to stack them? Why I go through a ridiculous amount of acetone. I buy several gallons of acetone a month. Well, maybe not a month. I buy probably about two gallons of acetone a month. So I can see just a little bit of surface rust starting on some of these. Recently I had somebody send me a video of them doing Damascus. And they couldn't figure out why it didn't forge well together. And it turned out the problem was after they got done cleaning the pieces, to cool them off, they dunked them in water. And I don't, I don't think he used acetone afterwards. I don't know that for sure, but What do I use all the acetone for? This is acetone. I'm cleaning the pieces off. Um, I use acetone to clean off the, the pieces I'm going to use for Damascus or any kind of layered steel. Um, I also use the acetone to clean up any kind of epoxy uh, when I'm doing handles. Okay, I use acetone to make sure there's no epoxy where I don't want it, like on the blade. But acetone eats epoxy. Which is a good thing for this. So by doing this, the paper towel also leaves behind some particles. It's not a bad thing because those little small pieces of paper are going to burn off and turn into carbon. So that's doing two things for us. Same, same reason I use uh, kerosene. It eats the oxygen, it turns to carbon. 
and carbon is good for the CL anyways. trash can. Which I might do really quick. Hey, how you doing? I'll put a liner in my trash can before I forget again and start throwing stuff. Start throwing stuff that way. Joe, right. I'm doing good. All right, so next step, we got to get these tack welded together. Done with the acetone. and tight. Yeah, this is, this is actually small for me. I usually, these are two inch wide. I usually do four inch wide. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's big, but it's not. Um, so I'm gonna run beads down the corners. I'm not gonna worry about the center.
getting tired of using the stick welder. Put a post on, I'm going to go cut one off. I use rebar. Here, so it looks like I already got one. I'm going to put it towards the bottom of the stack. Or top, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, okay. Forge is at almost 2100 degrees.
All right, Joe asks what kind of steel is in the stack? It is 10A4 and 15N20. I have not sent my sword in yet. Um, I've got plenty of time. It doesn't have to be, oh, I already got dirt on my face. It doesn't have to be there until uh, January 14th. Thank you, baby. No, you probably couldn't use a masonry chisel. They're probably not hardened steel. I don't know that for sure, but I'm going to guess uh, that they're not hardened steel. Now, if you're using a chisel from a jackhammer, things like that, or a power hammer, or not power hammer, a uh, hammer drill, I think those are going to be all hardened steel. I could be wrong. Yeah, a leg vice, I have one. And there's Mishka. Yes, hi, good girl. All right, off. Good girl. All right. Now we gotta put this thing in kerosene. Move you guys right here. I don't know why it does this. Jeez, I can't help it. This is so annoying. Soaking kerosene on over here. Let that soak for a minute. It doesn't really need to, but why not? Type of oil is best for quenching either Parks 50 or AAA uh, quench oils. They're engineered quench oils. Um, you can get them a lot of places. Try to figure out who the manufacturer is. It's cheaper to get them direct. Um, I know people have used peanut oil, canola oil. You get like one or two quenches out of it, and then it's done. You can't do it anymore. Uh, it's not going to work right. So spend the money to get good quench oil. Yeah, um, lake vices are, are nice. The... I don't use them. I don't use mine for everything. Um, a lot of the ones I've seen are not whole. They're missing pieces. So check that out. Make sure it's got the spring and all that stuff. <laughs> nice, Joe. All right. 
we are ready to go in. We're at 2100 degrees in the forge. That's plenty. I'm going to grab my light protection. We're going to throw this in. Now we just gotta wait for that thing to heat up and we can start doing our initial press. So I'm gonna change out the dies. Hey, how you doing? Robert Johnson. <laughs> uh, question is what pattern I'm doing. Today we're just going to be drawing out the Damascus King, that first billet made. It's 26 layers. Um, I don't know that we'll cut and restack today. I don't know that we won't. We'll see. Um, but when I go to restack, I'm going to cut it up into six pieces. So, and then we'll probably restack that again later. Um, I've got a few Damascus orders coming up. Uh, one of them is for a raindrop pattern uh, chef knife. But we won't be getting to that today, but we will get to it. All right, I need some coffee and to put away my kerosene. That annoys me. So I got some new lights. Uh, so I gotta add some more over there. They work really well. I don't have like any shadows when I'm grinding. Um, now I've been using this ring light, which worked. If I still had some shadows, if I was over to one side or the other or if I was too close to it, leaning over these lights. I don't have any of those, so 
Super nice. <laughs> they were kind of a pain to put up, but I think well worth it. I had just the Costco LED shop lights, and those were fine, but they started yellowing, and a couple of them, or one of them went, has a bad bulb or a bad area in the bulb. Okay, so when I do raindrop, I actually have raindrop pattern dies for my press. I have thought about taking off some of these, like two rows on each side. Um, it'd only give me three rows in the middle. Maybe just the ends. I haven't decided. That'll give me a, a little bit more pressure in those areas. A no dashi. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure I could make it. Yeah, it's definitely brighter in the shop. Uh, Floyd. I'd have to see a picture of what you actually want. Um, I don't know. Okay, so you're asking for a Japanese sword, longer katana. Uh, that's something I can't really price like this. We're gonna have to do a lot more talking. So um, shoot me a message through my website, woodsonknifeco.com. There is a link in the bio of my TikTok page. Shoot me a message through there, and we can talk about, you know, what size, style, materials, because there's a lot that can go into them uh, that will adjust the price one way or the other. So, you know, I've got, yes, hi, Mishka. She's being a baby. All right. Oh, good girl. So I've got one. It's not actually going to be a Japanese sword. It is a recreation of a um, of a sword from what is it? Wheel of Time. It's a book and a TV series. Um, but it's about the same size. This one is a Damascus clad sand mine, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than a mono steel. Yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah, Blade, like I said, we need to uh, chat a little more about this so I can you know, give you a better idea of what you're looking for. And that way I also have a better idea of what you want. So like I said, shoot me a message through the website or you can email me directly woodsonknifeco at gmail.com. All right, let's do, I'm gonna rotate that billet real quick. Honestly, not even halfway there, so. Nikita, I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, 
Joe, I've got to do some more hand sanding on the Book of Eli sword. Grab it. Oh, you should have stopped. You need to stop jumping up when you're not asked to. So I actually found out recently why she started jumping up without being asked to, without paying permission, uh, and it's the groomers. Um, my groomer actually admitted that that was probably them that got her into the habit, and so they're going to help correct it. Uh, but I've got the sword. It's all hardened. I did a test etch on it. Uh, which you can't see the pattern anymore because it's got a bunch of surface rust, but I still got a hand sand. It's at 400 right now. We got to go to at least 600 and probably touch up with 400 first, but. Forge is at 2166 degrees. I'm going to go turn it down just a touch. We don't need it at 2200 degrees. 2100 is fine. When you use a file after hardening a blade, the file should not dig at all. Uh, it should skate and it'll have a really high pitch tone as it skates down the blade. If it digs and it's got a deeper tone, the blade's not hard. Well, the blade's not as hard as that file. So that's a key. If the file's, you know, say 60 Rockwell, and it digs, but your blade is 55 Rockwell. There you go. It's still hardened, but not as hard as it could have been. No worries, Joe. Yeah, of course, Floyd. That's what I'm here for. Okay. See, there's just, there's so many, oh, I'm stepping on the cord. Uh, there's so many not names for swords and knives and stuff like that. It makes it hard to keep everything straight, especially because uh, if you're talking about Japanese swords and blades, period, there are so many names. And um, a small change to the shape or the length of the knife or sword can change it to a different name and yeah it's just it's kind of crazy but i just i don't have them all memorized i am trying though <laughs> okay we're still at 2160 I dropped the pressure on the tank down to 2.5 PSI.
horizontal. <laughs> okay, I'm a to rotate the bill. I'm gonna go clean my classes, these are bad. We still got a little bit of time till that bill is ready to press. Hopefully not too long. Actually, it looks closer than I thought. to 50 inches yeah that's sword that length is no problem for me especially with the heat treat because I've got my Gen Ken Excalibur I think that thing will do 52 inches inside um, and if I ever needed to I have a secondary uh, lid that I can cut a little hole in for the tang to pop through so I could do a longer sword um, Eventually, I will do a really big claymore. Eventually. Maybe I'll do a big Damascus claymore. I don't know.
Okay, initial press done. We're gonna do at least one, maybe two more of those with the flattening dies. Um, and then we'll switch over the drawing dies. May actually go to the power hammer. You guys think of my new little shop guy. Yeah, I've been wanting wanting one of these for a long time with that really cool head. But and I got one from somebody else. But it just it was not done to this level or even close. Uh, so I dig this thing. It is snowing like crazy outside today. And I guess it's going to snow most of the week. Like three to five inches this week. I bet we're ready. Not quite. Give it another 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, she does some really cool stuff and really, I mean, the anvil, everything. The knife that is actually almost sharp. In the 50s all week, lucky. So this weekend I picked up a oxyacetylene set. I've needed one for a while, wanted one for a while. And this one came from kind of a state thing. And it's all set up and it's nice. And I'm wheeling this in and I'm like, I feel like that old guy that's got an oxyacetylene tank now. Sometimes I have to. How can you tell if it's hardened steel? Well, if it's already hard, you can run a file down it. If the file skates, you're 
good. If it digs, it's not hard, or it's not as hard as the file. Um, how can you tell if just random steel is hardenable? You can do a spark test. Um, there's information online how that works. It's not super accurate. Um, you can do a heat treat and break test um, where you snap a piece of, of the steel off, look at the grain structure. You know, at the same time, you'll do a file test, that kind of thing. Um, I prefer to buy known steel. Um, that way I know exactly how the heat treat's supposed to be and uh, I can tell the customer or you know, whoever exactly what the steel is. Don't want no junk. <laughs> All right. problem yeah so I get a lot of people ask me you know hey can I use leaf springs can I use this here's a random piece of steel I found in my shop is it hardenable I have no idea um, you can get a good idea if you know what it came from uh, I was told early on as a rule of thumb stick with leaf springs that are older than the 70s uh, I think it was 75 or 78, something like that, and older. Um, and that's kind of a rule of thumb. It's not exact science. Um, other things, about the only way you can tell is doing a spark test. But that's, that's why I use known steel is because I don't want to have to guess what it is, use the wrong quench oil, or use the wrong... Uh, heat treat and tempering process. have no idea if the new leaf, leaf springs have nickel on them. I know that most of the new leaf springs come from China, and I've been told they're garbage for knife work. Yeah, it'll still be 1080. You're not losing that much carbon. It seems like you are with all this, the scale, but that's at the very, very surface. Um, it's not like carbon from the core is really leaching out. It takes a long time to get to there, um, and a lot of heat, a lot of excessive heat. Um, now, if you're running 23, 2400 degrees in your forge, and you see sparks coming out of your forge, you're burning carbon and you're losing carbon in your steel. 
Um, in fact, if you're if you're running your forge at all and you see sparks coming out, that means your steel is burning away. <laughs> those those sparks are carbon and stuff coming out of the steel. Um, but no, and I get where you're going with the question of the 1080 and will it still be because of the carbon loss? You're overthinking it. Um, that's going to be so minuscule, it's not going to matter. And most 10 series steel, whether it's 1075, 1080, 1084, 1095, usually heat treated about the same. And it's very, very close. 1095 has a couple options um, if you want to do a homone on it, because it will take a homone. Um, but yeah, you're you're not going to lose enough that it's going to be a different kind of steel or a different rated steel, really. And even if you did, there's not going to be any way to tell. Never know. Uh, now you could have a piece cut off, send it in, and have it tested. I guess they could probably do it that way, but. Yeah, I agree about China's stuff. However, they do make some really good machinery. Um, my power hammer's from China, and it's a great design, and it's a great piece of equipment. Granted, it was finished here in the U.S., but still. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Forging steel does it has no benefit. It adds nothing to the process. It's more difficult and you waste less if you forge to shape, but there's really no, no benefit. Um, there's an old term and an old theory of edge packing, where if you hammered steel down to a fine point or to a fine edge, that it was gonna be denser at that edge and it was gonna last longer. If that was the case, you could take a piece of steel and crush it a bunch, right? And it would end up being smaller at the end. That doesn't happen. That's not possible. So edge packing is not possible. So forging to shape is not going to help with the durability of the blade at all. It's At that point, it comes down to um, making sure that it was forged at the right temperature. If you forged it too cold, you put cracks in it, that's different. But... Um, it really comes down to the heat treat at that point is, is the heat treat good? Is tempering good? That kind of thing. Doing stock removal, which is cutting out knives from a, a piece of steel or forging a shape, there's no difference. Just one's easier than the other. One, you know, being a bladesmith means you forge. That's it. Um, I do a lot of stock removal with my billets that I make, you know, if it's my death kumai or anything that's got a non-ferrous metal in it or a pattern in it that I don't want altered, I'm going to cut the blade out and then grind it to the dimensions I want. Oh, yeah. So I think we'll do a couple runs on the power hammer. protection while I'm using the power hammer.
Okay. I do want to change out the dies. But I'm going to square this billet up a little bit more before I do. Uh, I am in Spokane, Washington, Great Pacific Northwest, where we get apparently a lot of snow. All right, you have a good one. Thanks for stopping in. T10 steel. What's T10? I don't know what T10 is. It's not one I'm familiar with. I think I've heard of it, but to me it sounds like a stainless. I don't know. Um, there are some steels out there that knife manufacturers... 1095, yeah, that's one thing, but I don't know, was that a typo, the ABOI? Yeah, there are some seals out there that knife manufacturers make in-house, and they make up their own names for it. Um, Apparently Shun is one of those. Um, I'm not. I'm not impressed with Shun. Above 1095. 1095 is as high as you get for a 10 series steel. Randy, there's... Whoa! I just kicked the power cord again. Um, I've heard Magna Cut Steel. I've never used it. That's one of those really hard to find high-end stainless steels. I've done a lot of research on a lot of those, and the numbers that they're touting and saying that, you know... Our steel is this much better than this, or it does this much. The numbers are so close to a lot of the other ones, I don't see the point in spending three times or four times as much on the steel just to get an arbitrary number of extra toughness or hardness over some of the really high quality stuff. Because you're talking minuscule. You will never know the difference. Um, but... If you like the name of that steel and you think it's cool and that's what you want to run, I got no problem using it. Um, but some of those steels, they charge a premium. It's ridiculously expensive. I have a piece of, I can't remember what numbers is, but it's a CPM stainless steel and just a small piece. It was over $100. Um, it's just ridiculous stuff. hair and metal when they forge you know it's just like throwing uh wood chips or or anything else that's going to burn away and turn to carbon i have never heard of t10 and i'm a bladesmith i, I feel like i have heard of it but 
I just I can't place it. And as far as something being used for swords, I'm betting it's probably a really cheap stainless steel from China. I don't know for sure, but um, it just to me it sounds like it. I don't know. I am making some Damascus. We've got a billet of 26 layers, 10A4 and 15N20. We are in the process of drawing that steel out. Okay. Yeah, see, I've just, I, for whatever reason, the T10 sounded like a stainless to me, um, but I've never, I've never used it. <laughs> yeah, Terminator steel. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> but no, I've never used T10. I've never seen it talked about in any of the blade forums or listed anywhere. I'm wondering if um, Knife Steel Nerds has something on their page about it. I don't know. Well, like I said, I mean, I just don't know about it and it really doesn't mean anything one way or the other because there's so many different kinds of steels out there. But if I come across it, now I know what I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah, TikTok's kind of the the place for makers these days. The algorithm's a lot more friendly to small businesses than Instagram and Facebook. A switchblade, it, and see that was kind of what I was thinking: is it does everybody call it T10 or is it something else?
So is this like Japanese blue steel or something? I don't know. I'm not familiar with it, but you guys have me curious. So I am making, right now it's only 26 layers. This is the initial billet. Um, it's 10A4, 15N20. This is going to be just a random pattern in Damascus for the most part, I think. I may, I do have an order for raindrops, so I may take a piece off of this when it's all drawn out and done and make raindrop Damascus out of it. But I don't know. So. that I'm getting fish lips all the time on my billets. It's kind of a new thing. and carbide two tool steel. I wonder how well that moves. Like when you're forging it, I wonder how how that steel moves. Okay, so So I've got one line in the very center of that billet on the side that the that piece of steel, for whatever reason, was in as wide, and there's a, a divot. It's very small, very thin. What I'm going to do is, after this gets a little hotter, I'm going to put some flux in there, um, and then we're going to hit hard on the press, which will close that up, should forge weld it together. It's either that or I keep going on the sides. I think I'm still going to put some flux in there just in case. I just don't want a cold shot. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Love you.
Ooh, cool, Joe. Africa, that's cool. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> That's awesome, Joe. I love it. All right. I think after this, we're going to go back to the power hammer. That's right. Put it right here. Okay. So I got rid of that little indent that I was talking about um, looks like some solid so I'm not super worried about that because it's going to end up at the very edge usually the edges get ground out anyways because there's usually some sort of inclusion at the edge and the ends um, so we cut off the ends grind down the sides but the more time you take perfecting what you're working on at each stage, the better the end result's gonna be. So whenever I run into a problem like this, instead of just skipping over it and saying, don't worry about it, I try hard, I don't always do this, but I try hard to take the time, fix that issue there. Even if it's not really a huge deal, just try to make it um, less of a problem so it's not gonna be a problem later down the road. If that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> After this live today, I gotta go fill my propane tanks. It's gonna be hard to get in and out of here later this week. And yeah, I got a lot of work to do around the shop and clean up and dump run, all that good stuff. All right, let's see if this thing's ready. Not yet. Not yet ready. 
I also have to go by the hardware store so I can pick up some PVC pipe so I can ship out that sword at some point in the next couple weeks. I think I'm going to ship it out next week. i got to do some videos with it first. Sorry, right, I got an adjustment issue with the oiler on this thing. Hey, Floyd, you too. Look forward to talking to you. All right, have a good one.
Hey, how's it going? Right on. I'm gonna mess with this thing later. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what's wrong with that oiler, but couldn't quite get it figured out. So it's almost up to temp. Um, we've got pretty well squared up. We're just going to draw it out. Um, once we get about half inch thick, um, we're going to square it up really good. And then that's going to be the time where it needs to be annealed. So it can be cut up into pieces and restacked. All right, Joe, you have a good one. See you next time. All right, so we're getting closer. Um, maybe another one or two presses on this uh, with the drawing dies, and we're going to switch back to the flattening dies, square the thing up, and hang it. And it'll be done. Done for now. so cold out my tank my propane tank doesn't have a cross line on it so I don't know how full it is I guess I could shut the door a little bit it's kind of cold in here Okay.
Okay. Um, we're just waiting on that piece of steel to get hot. Actually, let me check it. I might rotate it. And we're almost back up to town. Opened up the air a little bit more. We don't need that uh, reducing flame. Everything's forged well together, so uh, reducing flame means there's very little oxygen inside the forge. So I turn down uh, the air that's going into it quite a bit, but the gas stays the same. One more run through like that, real heavy press with the drawing dies, and then we'll go back to the flattening dies and square it up. What am I making? I am making some Damascus. Uh, right now we're at 26 layers. Got already got four twelve together, drawing it out, getting ready for it to be cut up and restacked, which I'm not gonna be doing today because I wanna anneal this. That way it doesn't ruin my saw blades. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're getting close to the first first run of this Damascus. So it'll get cut up into at least six pieces, restacked, drawn out again, and probably cut up a third time and restacked. Now, usually I go for at least five or six pieces in each stack, so 26 layers right now, you can do the math. I sell Damascus knives. I don't sell billets. Um, if you're looking for somebody that sells billets, uh, look up Bulldog Damascus on Facebook, Instagram. I don't know if he's on TikTok. Um, but yeah, he's Bulldog Damascus. Um, I know him. I would recommend his stuff. He does a great job. And he uses high quality 
steal. So check him out. And tell him I sent you. start to hurt after a bit. Holding on to tongs sucks. We're gonna let that get really hot. Well, pretty much what it was before. Um, and we're gonna run it through the, square, the flattening dies and square it up, make sure it's all nice and even. Uh, it may take a heat or two to, to get it right. Because the squarer, the flatter, and the straighter I get it at this point, the less work I'm gonna have to do when I go to restack it, and the more even the pattern's gonna be. I'm going to do one of these. Uh, I've got another stack of steel that I'm going to make into Damascus, but I'm going to do a real in-depth video for my Patreon on how I do the Damascus. Uh, I think I'm going to try to work on that this week or next. I get a video out on Patreon for December. And I will be making some of my videos on Patreon uh, public. I did notice this weekend, though, that my uh, first part of handle making on my Patreon, the video disappeared. It's gone. 
and I can't retrieve it. I can't get it off my phone anywhere. So that really sucks. I'm gonna have to redo uh, redo that all. I need more fire bricks. <laughs> I need to build something better for the front of this. Uh, I just got to get some more refractory cement to do it. Yeah, doing these fire bricks, they work, but they don't last very long. <laughs> How hot does it have to get to weld together? So. When I'm doing regular Damascus, I want to be around 2100 degrees. If I'm doing something with copper in it, I need to be below 1984 degrees because copper melts at that temperature. Um, brass, I need to be below 1800 degrees. Now steel will still move at those temperatures, but uh, and you'll be able to braze the non-ferrous metal to the steel. It's really what you're doing, it's not welding. Um, but yeah, for, for normal forging and normal forge welding, about 2,000 to 2,200 degrees. Anywhere in there works. Hey, how you doing, man? So I haven't measured that, but it's at least half inch thick. I'm thinking it's two and a quarter wide uh, length. It's coming up on 24 inches, probably around 20 to 22 inches long. So we're gonna get we're gonna get a decent sized stack out of this next one. Um, you can use a regular propane forge. Uh, I use a forced air ribbon burner propane forge um, so that's the ribbon burner right there there's the fan see right at that elbow right there is where the gas comes in you can see the line that's where it comes in goes through a really small orifice um, I used a it was like 594ths or 564ths I can't remember really small drill bit to drill the orifice size. A lot of people use um, MIG welder tips. 
I just didn't feel like it was the way I did it was cheaper, easier. Top of the morning. Um, yeah, I, I like my forge. I, I really like the ribbon burner. It has, the only downside is when you open the door, it's like a jet engine. So you have to be out of the way or you're gonna lose hair. So it's, it's got a little dish to it on the flats. And so I'm gonna do one more heat, bring those corners down. It's because I turned it on side to flatten out the sides. Um, so what I'm gonna do on this next one is just work on the flats, go through it really quick, probably do it twice, flip it over. And the reason I flip it over is these dies aren't gonna come down even, right? It's gonna come down like this, this is exaggerated, but which will cause that seal to kind of go at an angle, kind of banana. So I flip it over, that straightens it back out. It's, you know, it can be just a hair ab adjustment and it's going to do that. Um, so it's something that you can really adjust too much, not with this kind of machine at least. everybody thanks for following i appreciate it and thanks for all the likes it it helps um more times you hit the screen or hit the like button the more likes i get it all adds up the more likely i am to show up on other people's for you page so helps me grow my page and i really appreciate that uk how you doing Yeah. Hi, Misha. Come on, good girl. This is Mishka. She's my service dog. I don't have any food for you. Sorry. All right, let me see if that bill is ready. Not quite, almost. Very close.
go. Perfectly straight, nice and flat. So now it just needs to anneal overnight. So I'm going to throw it in the forge, get it nice and hot, then I'm going to throw it in my kiln. <laughs> right on. Glad to hear it, Hillbilly. <laughs> Facebook sucks. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Randy, the algorithm they use is pay to play. If you've got a bunch of money and you're a big company, you can advertise whatever you want. I've seen. Um, stuff that completely goes against Facebook's rules like suppressors um, you know all sorts of stuff sold on on Facebook it's because the company's got enough money Facebook doesn't care um, for small makers like myself uh, we don't have the budget to feed Facebook enough money for them to actually give us followers to put people put us in front of people and that's why TikTok works so much better is because the playing field's even. It's not pay to play. So that's my take on it. You guys are good. Over half a take on that thing. I thought I was pretty empty on that one tank, but it's a lot more full than I thought. All right. So, hey, everybody, thanks for watching. If you can, hit that follow button. Uh, Mountain Man, I'm actually already done. I made a billet of Damascus. It's only at 26 layers. It needs to anneal overnight so I can chop it up, and it'll be ready to restack. I'll probably do that next Monday. Um but it will be ready to restack, forge weld together, draw out, and potentially restack again. Um, I don't know how much steel, I'm just guessing. It's about a half inch thick, two and a quarter wide, probably 20 to 22 inches long of usable steel. Um, so I'll cut those up into pieces and go from there. So, yeah, cool. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you don't already follow me, hit the follow button and watch out for my, for my next live. It looks cool. Damascus, layered steel, all that's, it, it's only done for looks. Um, there's some old wives tale that, you know, Damascus was the strongest steel in the world. It's not, it's, it's not a thing. Um, that's been proven, but yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get off the live here. I will be back next week, 10 a.m. Probably be a much longer live than today. I just have a lot to do. So hope you guys join me then. Thanks for watching. As always, be kind. Much love. Have a great week.